What's up people and welcome back to the last Saiyan Satsumi review for Dragon Ball Super this year. One thing is Saiyan always keeps I don't know about the rest of you, but this was a really sad day for me. I love the show so much, and honestly, I did get a little bit teary at the end of the episode. It was a bittersweet moment. Honestly, the episode was awesome. Uh, the last fight was amazing, and then even the whole send-off was good. It's just sad that it's ending here and now. And as I've said for the last three or four weeks, it has not been confirmed anywhere that there will be a new Dragon Ball series coming out. But I am confident that we will get another series later on down the track. Now don't take my word for that, obviously I don't know, I just think that it would be the right move and especially after the Dragon Ball Super movie comes out, they'll have a bit more momentum to roll with and it'll just be a huge thing because this last episode, this last three episodes have blown up. But anyway, here goes my review. So obviously last week no one was prepared for Seventeen coming back. Seventeen is definitely strong but you can see on his face that he knows that he's no match for Jiren right now. He was no match for Jiren before and now he's injured and trying to fight Jiren again. This is definitely why Seventeen is an MVP in this tournament though because he didn't care that he wasn't any match for Jiren. He still put up the fight the best he could and he even jumped in with attacks where he knew that he didn't know if it was going to work or not. He was even surprised when Frieza and his Golden State was fighting Jiren and he was like man those guys are crazy. When Jiren could actually completely annihilate Frieza, or at least he could have at the beginning of this tournament. The animation in this episode was perfect, flawless, and probably my favorite part in it was when Goku got to jump back in. Obviously Goku was tired, uh, almost done, but he knew that he needed to push out all he could to finish Jiren off. So seeing him and Frieza team up to fight Jiren was crazy, it's something that you thought would never ever happen. And honestly you gotta give it to him, this is not how anyone really expected it to end. Obviously we knew Goku and Jiren would be fighting, but who knew that at the beginning of this tournament, Frieza would be the one helping Goku take down Jiren. I know a lot of us thought it would be Goku and Vegeta, or just Goku by himself, or Goku and Gohan, but it's Frieza, he steps up, he gets Goku to throw him at Jiren, and he tries to tackle him out. Obviously, Jiren catches him and tries to... And then this part is my favorite part. Goku dives in, and you can see him going in and out of Super Saiyan, that this is actually him out of energy he has nothing left in the tank he's putting everything he has into tackling jiren out of the arena because look how crazy this is he keeps going in and out of super saiyan it's him trying to get to super saiyan to push out everything he has and he just can't do it because he has no energy it just keeps flickering on and off it was also pretty funny to see 17 was being back up he wasn't doing nothing but it was hilarious when they were taking him out and he was just hanging on to the ring hoping he would stay in so they would win. But yeah, anyway, our theories were right. I know we all knew that this would happen in some way, form or fashion, but the universes get wished back and it was all part of Zeno's plan really. Which honestly I think says a lot about his character because it wasn't Daishinkan that said he expected someone to wish the universes back. Daishinkan actually says that it was Zeno's prediction that someone righteous enough would win and would wish for all of the universes back. And if they didn't someone wish for something selfish, then he was just going to destroy everything. But here we've been thinking that Zeno was more like a child, that he maybe wasn't suited for the role, that he was just doing whatever he wanted and he was just the most powerful being there. But it really does seem like he does think things through and he thought, well, we're going to have this tournament, it's going to be fun, but I do think that someone will wish them all back. And I guess for him, he thought this would be the ultimate way to test mortals, how mortals are, how they react, and uh, if they were worth keeping around. I gotta say this ending for Dragon Ball Super has definitely given me more closure than Z ever did. They're definitely in an awesome place where if they wanted to continue the series they have multiple avenues to go down. The main one obviously continuing where Z left off having Oob into the picture. We've got Goku training to master Ultra Instinct to get better at it and to be able to use it at will. 12 universes to explore we still don't know about four of them and what kind of fighters they have. Also just to clarify those four universes that were excluded from the tournament they weren't excluded because they were stronger, they were excluded because their mortal level was higher, meaning that their universe was progressing faster than the other universes, and it doesn't necessarily mean they have any stronger fighters there, they're just their civilizations are more built up. The level of worlds there had more civilizations. We have Goku fighting Jiren, Goku fighting Hit, Goku fighting the Saiyans, Vegeta going to planet Sadala. Frieza being resurrected and back in our universe. There are plenty of avenues to keep this going, but at the same time, the episode ended where you would feel at peace with it all being done. Obviously, I'm not fine with the ending here, but 
you can get that feeling that it was fine to be left there. Another cool thing about the episode was uh, seeing Frieza and Goku go back and forth. It kind of seemed like how Goku takes his enemies and makes them into friends and allies and people that change their ways. It made it kind of seem like that was going to happen with Frieza. Something I seriously didn't want to happen. I know he does it to everyone and it's cool and it's awesome, but Frieza is Frieza. Leave him the way he is. And then we see that they did leave him the way he is. He just comes back, uh, the emperor of his fleet, and he's the emperor of the universe, and he's going to just do more evil things. So it was kind of cool to see that he was still the same. And I mean, that could even lead into the movie. Obviously, Toriyama has said that the movie will dive into Frieza and the Saiyans and their relationship, a bit more lore about them. So with that end sequence with Frieza, I really do think that that will have something to do with the new movie. I thought that maybe we would just go with flashbacks of uh, Frieza and the Saiyans, uh, both their backgrounds and kind of what happened, but I mean, it could be something like Frieza has found a new warrior and that's who he sends to fight Goku. Or it could show in the movie that Goku has already defeated Frieza and it's just sort of flashing back to when he defeated him, what Frieza maybe said to him and maybe that leads into the movie somehow. Or it could not even be that. It could just be that Frieza might be in the next season if they decide to go ahead with another season. Also, let's talk about one of the coolest shots that they had in this episode. Vegeta asking Goku how did he achieve Ultra Instinct. Goku says he doesn't know. It just sort of happened naturally when he was backed into a corner. Vegeta saying that he'll get to a form stronger than Ultra Instinct. Goku says, sweet, we'll both get stronger. Vegeta's like, yeah, of course we will. We're Saiyans, it's what we do. We break our limits, we get stronger. And then it shows them taking the stances in almost the exact same background as they did the first time they did battle. Little things like that is what made the ending a lot easier, a lot more pleasant, uh, just everything coming full circle. I think they've done it. I think that Super is now my favorite overall series in the Dragon Ball franchise. It's a bit cool, it comes down to personal preference. My favorite saga of all time will always be the Cell Saga. Goku realizing that he's not gonna be able to beat the enemy this time, but he knows someone will. His son. But in terms of series as a whole, I believe that I enjoyed Super a little bit more than I did Z. Now for me, it's a combination of things. The stories I feel were awesome. The animation really did start off bad. I had a lot to say about it, but in this latest tournament, they really stepped it up. The score is amazing. I don't know if any of you have watched Dragon Ball Z with the original Japanese score. Uh, most of us watching it in the West, we grew up with the uh, Bruce Falconer score, but the score right now in Dragon Ball Super, the Japanese score was incredible. All of the themes were awesome. And we ended it off in a tournament where there wasn't really anyone bad. There was no good or bad. There was no big evil. There was just universes that had to survive and they were just doing what they thought was right. So for me, the series definitely takes it and I can't wait to see if they do come out with another series, where they will go from here, but I'm super excited for the movie. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel for when the updates come out. I will be updating you. This is not the end of the Saiyan Satsumi channel. There are other animes that I will do. There's still a lot of Dragon Ball things that I do, Dragon Ball news, and there's a lot of other stuff coming. But for those of you watching, uh, thank you guys so much for sticking with me for the past two years that I've been doing this. It's almost been two years since I started this channel just solely talking about Dragon Ball and it has been awesome. I've enjoyed making these videos and I thank you guys for watching them. I'm just a guy that really, really loves Dragon Ball and wants to talk about my theories, opinions, put them out there to like-minded people. So thank you guys for coming to this space and checking out what I do. And again, there's definitely more stuff coming here, so make sure you subscribe to get all the latest news for the Dragon Ball movie, Dragon Ball if the series comes out, and a whole bunch of other content. If you liked anything I had to say in this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see me do other things in other places other than this room, uh, boxes will be on the screens right now. There is a subscription button here somewhere. Click that. Thank you guys so much for watching the last Saiyan Satsumi review for the year. I'm the Saiyan Satsumi. Catch you guys next time. Yeah. <laughs>